Okay, afternoon everybody. My name is Julie Hanna. I'm the Regional Manager for Scotland in the British Horse Society. This is a nice little photograph that was a session we had last year at the Scottish Government um, doing a lot of work in terms of promoting road safety with the police who are one of our main um, partners. Okay, so the British Horse Society, who are we? We are the UK's leading charity. So we oper operate across the UK and internationally as well. As of the end of October, we had over 115,000 members and we have just over 8,000 members within Scotland and we're working for every single horse and rider. So these are a couple of issues that we're faced with. Um, as you realise just now, COVID is taking up the majority of our time. So this with the recent changes yesterday, constantly been updating or interpreting the rules and guidelines. And we get the dealings with licensing, transport, um, rural crime, equine ID, et cetera. And some of these I'll cover in further on through the, the presentation. So in ter terms of partnership, this is only a small number of partnerships that we work with. So um, as we all know, working together, we do get a lot better results. So one main um, partner, but I say is Lanter, also SRUC, Horse Scotland, especially um, now during COVID interpreting all the government guidelines. Um, pass for all. So there's lots of access, partners, welfare, safety. So a big one, as I said, is Police Scotland. Some of you may have heard of a campaign called Lose the Blinkers, where the British Horse Society work with Police Scotland to promote road safety. And it's been a very successful campaign. Just unfortunately, it can't operate during COVID. OK, so going on to different types of employment, a lot of people think of um, equine, all you can literally do is coaching, which is far from the truth. So there's so many different rules that you can see. So anything from vets to racing and um, retail, you've got all the, the clothing and like, horse feed establishments. You've got horse dentists, you've got lawyers, you've got livery yards and the list does go on, as you can see here in farriers. So there's a lots of different, a huge range of employment through the equine industry. Um, here's a few more examples. So marketing is a big one, um, event management, um, like with COVID, of course, um, groom, professional rider, police, uh, racing, physio, saddlers. So the list does go on in terms of the equine industry. The equine industry is huge. So within Scotland per annum, it equates to 351 million. And that doesn't even um, include the racing market, which is uh, that amount again. So it's a huge amount to the equine industry. I know how much I pay for my horse. And if every person who has a horse in the country is doing that and probably more, then you can understand how big the industry is. Um, so there's about 70,000 horses within Scotland um, from recent research that was carried out last year. OK, so I'm going to cover the BHS qualifications. Um, so the BHS qualifications is a, a worldwide qualification. So it's the only equestrian qualification where you can actually work anywhere within the UK and abroad. So we do get a lot of people training for BHS qualifications and then going to work abroad. And then we get people from abroad coming to take part in our virtual training sessions, which have been happening. So there's career pathways for coaches, grooms, ride leaders, riders and trainers. And it's ensuring our future workforce is trained and employable. We don't want to see people going out teaching, for example, who've got no qualifications. That means they've got no insurance, they've got no first aid and no safeguarding either. Um, so it's a foundation skill. So uh, and the career in the equine industry can be very rewarding and has a huge amount of experiences to bring to it. So whatever your, your career aspirations you may have, you, may, you don't necessarily need to be a rider. There's lots of work involved with caring for a horse and other um, careers out with that as well. So the BHS Equine Excellence Pathway is really the, the route to go down if you wish to pursue this career. And there's a link on the website if you want to note that down and that gives you an awful lot of information which I'll cover today as well. So what does this mean for you? Well, it's progressive, it's modern, it's practical and supportive. So we have a lot of BHS approved riding centres and there's one up in Aberdeen called Aberdeen Riding Club. And they've just recently partnered with SRUC in Aberdeen and it means they can deliver all the practical experience. So it's not all um, classroom based. Um, so this is a huge development with one of our approved centres to get involved with this. So here's just a wee game to see if any of you actually know many equestrians out there. So it's Carl Hester. Um, Ian Stark, who's a Scottish one, Yogi Breisner, who used to be the um, manager for the GB eventing team. We've got William Micklem and then Jenny Lauriston-Clark. So if any of you are horsey out there, hopefully you'll recognise some of these faces. 
So here's a summary of the various qualifications you can do through the British Horse Society. So as I said, you can do groom only, you can get involved in riding and training, and also coaching. So you start from stage one, we do care and ride, and there's also a ride safe qualification to test your skills on safety. Then there's stage two, and stage two there's an initial coaching qualification, and then you go into stage three. So once you pass stage three, you can then become one of our BHS accredited professional coaches. And there's a huge network throughout the UK of our coaches. If you wish, you can then go on and progress your career and go into stage four, and then we also have a performance coach, which is a higher level. Following on from that, you'll see at the bottom of the slide, we have something called fellowship. So this is a small number of BHS coaches within the country who gain this higher level of knowledge. Uh, so we do have, uh, we had a recent one, Eric McKechnie Guire, some of you may know from Scotland, who just recently got that this year, and he was the only person who achieved this. So here's just a, a quote from Sam York. Sam is again one of the younger, more recent fellows of the British Horse Society. She just became a fellow in 2017 and we were lucky to have Sam up in Scotland last year delivering for us. So as you can read that for, for yourselves, what coaching means, so you can change lives through coaching. Um, and it's amazing the differences you, you can make um, by delivering your coaching sessions to different people. So have you got a mixture from the, the children right up to um, the adult sessions as well. OK, so if you want to do specific this on the coach, there's a bit of a summary from the previous slide that you've got your stages one, two and three and on to your four and on to your performance coach and then the fellowship. OK, so this is really just a summary going through the different levels. On this is linked to a, a video, but um, we just wouldn't have time to go through every single video today. Um, but if you have a look at the, the link, if you want to note that link down, um, and I'll also provide these links on our BHS Scotland Facebook page afterwards. It means that you can go on and you can have a look through the, the various videos. So some of you may say, well, I'm not that interested in riding, but I love all the grooming aspect, which is great. So we do a pathway just for the groom pathway. So you do all the care side, but you don't have to do the riding. So there's lots of like professional riders out there or big yards that need groom jobs. Um, this You wouldn't get involved with the riding such, so much. OK, and then this is stage two. Again, this link to a video and I'll put these links onto our Facebook page after today. OK, so this is a groom with a riding pathway. So you may get some professional riders who want a groom, but they want them to be able to exercise some of the horses as well. Um, so this shows you the options which are available for this. And then going down to the stage one, again, this video is available. Um, and this have some information now going on to the ride leader pathway. So within Scotland, tourism is a huge development. So people don't always relate tourism to equestrianism. So within a lot of our centres, you would then be able to do a qualification, which would then give you um, the qualifications to go out and actually take a ride out. So this might just be maybe an hour trek, or it could be a half day ride, it could be a full day ride, or there's also overnight rides as well. So that might be something, maybe a weekend ride, and it means you've got all the experience and knowledge of how to deal with these. Okay, within the BHS website, which is a simply bhs.org.uk, there's lots of information there about our career pathways and how to get involved with assessments and training. There is a lot of training available um, virtually just now um, with COVID, so it, there's always, always an opportunity to get involved with. And the BHS, we're always here to support you. So you can see a document at the left hand side called the skills record. So whenever you want to do some training, you can get paired up with one of our coaches and then they would then sign off. And um, just to, you would then have an understanding you've met the, the um, relevant standard for that. Um, so that really shows you what the book looks like inside. We have lots of learning resources. So the BHS has their own bookshop online. Um, and you can have a look through and you can purchase different volumes from your volume one up to your volume four. And there's lots of workbooks to go with that as well. I know people prefer it maybe to test themselves and there's lots of really good exercises within those books. Also within the BHS website, there's lots of how-to videos. So they're really, really good just to go through, just to make sure you're doing everything the, the correct way for undertaking your BHS qualification. So there's, there's lots of resources on the, the BHS website. There's also a lot of training videos on there, so it goes through the various levels, both in terms of care and ride, and it shows what you actually need to do. 
and the BTS also have their own YouTube channel and a lot of these videos are available on YouTube as well to apply to the younger market. Okay, so the BTS website, there's lots of top tips about how to get involved with the assessments and different training aspects as well. Okay, so within each area, we have a BHS national and regional manager. So I'm the regional manager, and then I have a colleague, Helena Mocklin, who's the national manager, and she'll get more involved with maybe some more policy issues, um, national issues across Scotland, and with the access. So with on the BHS website, you can go and have a look and see what's going on within your each area as well. Okay, so moving on to volunteering. Volunteering is a big role within the BHS. Um, for, on the, the start of your career ladder, it's really, really good to have some volunteering on your CV. I myself, I started off as a volunteer for the organisation before I started working with them. So I was a volunteer for 10 years. So that gave me a huge experience to know what how the organisation ran and the actual worth of the volunteers because the, the BHS functions um, and a lot of the work is done by the volunteer, which we just couldn't do without. So it's, it's amazing all the work you can get involved with. And it's a great way of meeting people in an area with similar interests. OK, so as I mentioned previously, we've got BHS accredited professional coaches. So here are just a few of the benefits which you can get. So you've got access to professional leading community of all the coaches. You get insurance cover, which is really important nowadays. And um, it's a really good toolkit. And as part of that, you get your first aid and safeguarding courses included, along with your membership to the British Horse Society. You get discounts on CPD events. That was mentioned at the previous, the forestry talks so continuing professional development. Um, where our coaches are required to carry out six hours per year, but a lot of them do a lot more than that, that's for their own interest. They also get discount off our BHS assessments and they get their own promotion on our websites. The BHS also do a scholarship, so if you're linked to a BHS approved centre, and there's quite a few of these within Scotland, then they can help with funding to undertake your training and assessments. Okay, so qualities for success. What skills would the equine industry look for in a young person? Well, these are some of them. Optimism, open to different ideas, confidence, and a lot of this gets built up during the time of working within the um, industry, a team player, but also having an individual initiative, hardworking and motivated. So in terms of what qualifications would be, um, would be looking for for a young person, it does depend on what type of equine industry you're, you're wishing to join. So the, going through your coaching may be completely different to being obviously a horse vet or a farrier. So it does depend on what, you, what you're looking for. OK, so touch on modern technology. Um, we all like to have a look at different gadgets we can use and horse riding at the equine industry is no different. Um, so one idea is video analysis. Some of you may have seen some of the videos that Russell McKechnie Guire puts on his um, Facebook page and his website, and that's all based on the video analysis technique. And then we have this different range of um, examples you can use within. This is all to do with the coaching aspect, which can be can be basic. OK, so we work with the SRUC, um, as I mentioned, the Aberdeen Riding Club in order to provide some practical experience. So more information, certainly on the BHS website, you can follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, so just going through, there's also in terms of qualifications, we have what's called challenge awards. And these are different um, awards for all people from juniors right up to adults that they can do. And this also brings you into a direct entry into the BHS qualification system. So we have about the horse and we've got about the rider. So there's a series of aspects for each individual one. You can see about the horse and then about the rider. Um, so we've got some new awards for juniors about horse health and um, horse knowledge. We've got the first pony guide for junior and our mounted games. And at the end of it, we all like to receive a certificate and a nice little badge, always a, a good benefit. So just touching on a few, a few last different careers. You've got photography, research, dentist, some of these we've mentioned at the start of our presentation as well, and the mounted police. OK, so we can now open up to any questions and just maybe take a wee note of my email address. If you want to contact me at any time for any further information, that would be great. Thank you.